Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be showing you my April bullet journal spread setup. Last month I just barely made it in time for the March setup and this time I'm early because I was very determined not to be late this time. Although I think that I may have been able to make it in time probably only because I was just a toxic whirlwind of productivity and I probably shouldn't do that too much. I really should make sure that I take breaks and I'm not just go 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 all the time. Because my schedule has been so go 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 these days, in my imagination I keep thinking about wanting to escape to a magical place somewhere in the forest in the middle of a library where I can look at the stars, be by myself, not really have to talk to anyone, and just enjoy books and art. It's a magical, peaceful getaway, basically, and that desire really manifested in my bullet journal setup this month, and you can see here that I'm painting a fantasy type of library where it's open to the skies and it's overgrown with lush green trees and plants and it's filled with a whole series of different books that has sparkles and jewels on the covers. I think this type of fantasy magical library and just overall magical scenes will be a repeating theme in my artwork and in my bullet journal because I just really really enjoy coming up with these imaginary scenes and putting them into reality. I didn't have my spreads for this month to planned out. It was mostly improvised. I only basically planned out the calendar page and then beyond that, all I knew was that I kind of wanted to continue that kind of magical library theme. And so for my weeklies, I wanted to make it um, these Dutch doors that look like they're part of some sort of magical book. For the pages of the book, which would end up being my weekly spreads, I actually thought about trying to make the pages look older, maybe by either stamping it with ink or coloring it in with colored pencils or maybe even spilling some coffee on it and spreading it around to make it look a little bit more brown. But in the end, I decided not to do that because I didn't want to risk the colors pooling into my other pages and also I didn't want to spend too much time on this spread as I did still have other tasks to do. I was really excited to paint these book covers for the middle of my spread that precedes my weeklies. However, I didn't really have a designed image in my head as I was painting this so I was really just painting random brush strokes and then trying to make it work and adding to it. <laughs> and so in the end, I, I don't think I really liked how it turned out too much. I do think I want to maybe plan it out a bit better next time. Sometimes my improvisation, it does work out. And like I mentioned before, sometimes it doesn't quite. And this was one of those times where I felt like it didn't quite come together. But that's okay. I'll definitely try again and see how it turns out. Also, I've had this recurring thought that I've been wondering about sometimes where you know how for athletes sometimes they talk about them being in good condition one day or being in poor condition another day and it really affects their performance. Well, I feel like I've noticed that for art too and I wonder if any of you experience the same. Some days I feel like, wow, I'm just really <laughs> in good condition and then the art just seems to turn out really nice and everything just seems to flow and work well and then other days it just seems like I don't even know how to draw at all or paint at all and it looks like I am back in kindergarten or something like that. So I do notice that my art condition seems to fluctuate from day to day and for my April sped spreads I was uh, quite tired and so I feel like I was doing some drunken painting and so it was one of those not so great condition types of days. Do you notice that ever happened to you as well? 
Okay, that's enough of my random rambling. Let me explain my spread a little bit. I am covering it with some washi tape stickers and going for a kind of scrapbook, kind of junk journal kind of layering type of technique, which I don't have much familiarity with, but I do like the aesthetic of it, so I've been trying to do that more in some of my spreads. up. <laughs> I thought my week started on Sunday but it actually starts on Saturday and so I tried to cover it up by writing over it which I don't know what I was thinking that didn't work so I decided to glue a piece of paper over it and turn it into a note section. Mistakes will happen all the time in bullet journaling and in whatever else that we may be doing and I think that we just need to learn to roll with the punches and I think that bullet journaling has been a great way for me to learn to let go of my perfectionistic tendencies and go with the flow. my first year of bullet journaling and though I have learned a lot and know roughly what works for me, I still haven't figured it out completely and so every month I change up my spreads in terms of the formats, in terms of what spreads I include and I'm just doing trial and error to see what I like and don't like. Also, I think that even if after years of bullet journaling, it may be possible that I will still continue to vary it up the way that I do, reason being that I really do like the variety and it keeps me bullet journaling. Otherwise, I get a little bit bored because bullet journaling is not only my productivity tool, but it's also my creative outlet. And in exploring my creativity in art and bullet journaling, I have noticed that I work best if I let myself create without restrictions. And that means without sticking to too much structure, without really forcing myself to stick to a single medium, just doing whatever I feel like in the moment. And now for a flip through. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. See you soon.